Last night, as we were ending the Timcast IRL show, the live portion, we got notified that we had been swatted again. For those that aren't familiar, swatting is when someone calls the police with a fake report claiming that something extreme is happening and the goal is to get the police to come in and kill you. And it's happened before. There was a guy who uh, uh, two people were arguing on the Internet. Someone gave a fake address saying, you know, do something about it. The other guy called in a swatting incident and the police showed up to a random person's home because the address was fake. And some guy walked out after hearing the cops and they shot and killed him. They killed him. Swatting is attempted murder. It, it may be a little hyperbolic. I, I don't know. I, I don't like saying it, but a lot of people keep saying like, yo, they're trying to get you killed by doing this. And they did it again. Last night, uh, I'm not going to get into the full details. The first time we got swatted only, it was like 12 days ago. It was right after we hosted Marjorie Taylor Greene. It happened live on camera. You know, we had the cops walk through the room. You see Luke, you know, he's talking on the show and then the cop walks past and we're like, what just happened? And then, you know, I get up from the show. The show is disrupted. We had planned a bunch of segments and the police, sure enough, there were like eight officers going through the house. There were state troopers. There were like different, there was local police. There was sheriff. There was state. We got sweated last night and I'm not going to get into the full details. This time it wasn't, uh, uh, it, it was during the show, but uh, uh, they didn't come into the studio, but it was worse uh, what happened. And uh, I'm, I'm not going to get into the full details for security reasons. Uh, we've also we also had a, a guy uh, sneak into the house and then lie and make a video. He's trying to make himself famous or whatever, but uh, he trespassed. And so I, I think I, I have to address this stuff. There's been a lot of people who are saying we should never talk about it. We shouldn't make content out of it. We shouldn't bring it up. And we've had those discussions. So we got swatted after hosting Marjorie Taylor Greene, which you may have seen. And uh, so Marjorie Taylor Greene came on the 5th. I thought we had an excellent conversation. But of course, there are people who really don't like her. She was getting inundated with death threats the following day. Here's what I think happens. On January 5th, at 8 p.m., we go live. The show ends at 10 p.m. And then YouTube sees it as formally published at 10 p.m. This means that for most people, the day is almost already over. And many of the notifications going out won't be until the next day. In fact, I would say two thirds of the views we get on our podcasts happen the following day throughout the day. It makes sense, right? I think that's why we got swatted the first time for hosting Marjorie Taylor Greene. They called in a local police. They called in a suicide hotline. They called a state police. They said that two people had been shot and that they were armed and going to kill themselves or something like that. And the police came in and wouldn't take no for an answer, even though it seems like they knew it was a swatting. So uh, the, I guess the, the reason I decided, you know, I'm like, the reason I said we, we need to talk about this and bring it up is because it happened live and people were wondering. And I think it's important to let people know what's happening. I think it's, I think it's important people know the, the risks, the dangers, and the psychosis. I don't like making content about me. Uh, uh, I really, really don't. And often, you know, there are stories, there's people tweeting at me. You know, there was a, a, a like I, I was trending on Reddit or something. I was on the top post of Reddit and I'll do videos about what's going on in the world. But I do think what we're seeing now with two swatting incidents, a trespassing incident, and we were also hit with cyber attacks as a perfect example of what I've been warning about and the escalation. And it's and it's hitting me directly. So it is about me, but I also think it's the bigger story. And, you know, maybe there's a conflict of interest, but I can provide that personal insight. I think a lot of people will make content about this. They'll talk about what's going on politically. And I think this is extremely, extremely relevant. And it is weird, to be completely honest. You know, James O'Keefe, he came on the show the other day. And I think this is partly, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm not trying to, you know, say this to, in any way to disrespect Andy, no, Libby or James. But I think, you know, their presence is uh, a contributing factor to the swattings. And again, not their fault or anything like that. That's not, that's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying. We do a show with some of the most prominent independent media calling out the left, the establishment, the cult members, and of course, people will get mad about it. And so it needs to be discussed. There's also the issue of taking this very, very seriously and making sure everyone has an opportunity to know how serious we take this and why uh, uh, you, you put yourselves at risk when you do this. So I'll say, I think last night we got swatted. Uh, it, it, it obviously has something to do with me with people on the show, clearly. But like with Marjorie Taylor Greene last night, uh, uh, the previous night, we hosted Andy No, Libby Emmons, 
and James O'Keefe. And these people are reviled by the establishment. Uh, Libby, not as much. She's just the editor in chief of the Post Millennial. But of course, she runs the site where Andy No works. Andy No, of course, nearly a million followers. James O'Keefe, probably way more had he not been banned from Twitter and all these platforms. And so this video goes up at 10 p.m., but it's not until yesterday throughout the day that people actually get a chance to see it. And so, of course, I believe what we're seeing is an act of pure desperation. Last night, around uh, uh, as the show was ending, we wrapped up. And then as soon as the show was over, I was told we were swatted. The police did show up. What happened this time? Worse. But I'm not going to explain what happened because one of the, one of the things you got to understand, the people who are doing this are trying to gauge the response from police and our security. The first time it was very obvious and we had this massive response and I thought it was important we talk about what happened. This time, I'm not going to tell anybody other than, wow, I'll just say that it was worse. People want us dead. I'll put it that, I'll, I'll, I'll keep, I'll, I'll just, I'll just keep it blunt. People want us dead uh, because this world is being ripped apart, uh, because our, our political landscape is on fire, because my show and, you know, I, I've, I've, I just broke a million followers on Twitter and it's just, man, it's tough. It really is because, you know, sometimes it, it's hard to know whether or not it's all worth it when people are, are going to try and destroy everything about you, even like take your life, scare your family and disrupt everything. But this is conflict. This is civil war. A guy broke into the house. Now, let's address this. Some people may have seen it. He's lying. He's trying to claim that he was let in. And it's all just lies because these people are scumbags. Scumbags, man. I'm just pissed off. So we got swatted. We got swatted after Marjorie Taylor Greene comes in. Then we get hit by a DDoS attack, a gigabit attack. No small feat. This, for those that aren't familiar, a distributed denial of service attack is when they flood your network with requests so that it, it shuts your internet down. We had Mike Rowe on the show. Awesome show. Talking about hard work. And we were hit by a DDoS attack. And we have security. People are like, won't you have security? Bro, I don't think people get it. This is a substantial attack on us. Repeated. We got hit by a DDoS attack. Shut down the show. Our mitigation efforts were even being blocked. It was insane. That blew my mind that we got hit by a, a, an international botnet gigabit DDoS. Took the show off the air. We um, pulled out our backups. Show carried on like normal for the most part. Then we have a guy break into the house. He waited until James O'Keefe and Andy No uh, had entered the property. And then it appears... He snuck on as they were entering, confusing our staff and our security to make it seem like he was part of their group. And because we have a crew come in all at once, we didn't realize. And he went in through, uh, he, 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 look, the way our property is set up, there's an easement. In order to get to the property, to the actual building and studio, you have to drive past another four or five acre property, two of them, in fact. So you're driving about, I don't know, 1500 feet down a road that says no trespassing, no trespassing. You are being recorded. This guy drove on the property. He even says, like, I was waiting for the security guards, but nobody came. So he decided to just to drive and trespass on the property. Why? Because he wanted attention. After we had been swatted, after we had been DDoSed, after we are being attacked and our lives are being threatened, this guy said, I want to be famous and I'm going to come on, on, on their property. And so he did. And he walks up to our front door right after the guests had come in when there was uh, when when we were greeting everybody, making sure everyone was taken care of. And that's our fault. That is our fault. It happened. I fully accept that. We have we have since gone insane on our security protocols. And now all future guests are going to be blocked and, and we've got to we've got to do that now because of piece, pieces of garbage who think they can come into our property at a time when we are under attack. And so he does. And then he tries claiming he was invited in. We have security camera footage. He was not invited in. He was not. All right. T guy was chopping onions or something. And he walks in the front door and then starts trying to talk. And apparently our T guy just thought he was part of James's crew. James O'Keefe's crew. 
So that so 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 we have a guy break into the house. The next day we get swatted. Here's what I didn't tell you. Here's the update. Yesterday morning, we were hit by another DDoS attack. We are under a sustained attack. And this is why I think it needs to be talked about. I know a lot of people are like, don't talk about it. Don't expose what's going on. Don't bring it up. And I'm like, I get it. I get it. I get it. But I think people need to understand this and they need to know what's happening. And it is a serious part of the conflict and what I've been warning about for some time. So a guy breaks into the house and, and he can say whatever he wants. We, we already talked to the police. It's, it's a felony. It's a very serious felony. And because of the swatting, we have no choice. Our hands are tied. This guy's likely going to go to prison. He admitted everything. He made a video about it. He bragged about it. And he was trying to justify it, I guess, saying, I didn't sneak in the house. Doesn't matter. Yo, I don't, I don't, I don't like prison systems. I don't like uh, locking people up. I get it. This guy was a fan and he wanted to come and he, and he want, and this was his opportunity to get us thinking that, that because we wouldn't respond to him, that we would, would put him on our shows and all that stuff. Well, guess what? Now the guy's going to go to prison and there's nothing I can do about it. Our hands are tied because of the swatting, because of the DDoSes. We have no choice. We've already talked to the police. You know, look, we get swatted and the cops show up and they start asking questions and I'm pissed off. Because the police published our address, not not directly, but they basically did. You know, we live in the middle of nowhere and they're like, on this block, it happened. And I'm like, nobody lives here. There's one address. And so then a guy shows up. Well, now the police, uh, um, this is my presumption based on everything that happened, considering they were the ones who published, it, it, they're not the only ones who published their address, but considering after the incident, it created a huge uproar in the area. People were talking about it everywhere. Considering that, some guy tries enter. Uh, some guy breaks into the property. The cops were like, "It's burglary. It's a felony. We don't care." You know, I think the police out here are upset about the swatting and now swattings, and so they don't want to be taken for fools. So I can only assume that this dude who thought he was going to enter the property, they are. I mean, we're in the D.C. metro. Uh, this the production studio is in Maryland. We are just on the border of Frederick. I I, I know everybody. You know, I like they're like, why are you telling me where you're saying where you are? Look, I, I it's beyond that point. Okay, I live in West Virginia. We're here in this in this county, and this county is where most uh, where a good portion of you know prominent DC politicos live. People are pissed. So we have this guy enter the property illegally. I I know I said it. The next day in the morning, we got hit by, a, by a, a, a DDoS attack again, a cyber attack against our infrastructure. We have intrusion, in, intrusion attempts. People are trying to break into our network. It's just, it's unrelenting. That night, uh, uh, we get swatted. And uh, I won't give details on that. Suffice to say, we are armed in this house to the legal extent that Maryland allows. But let's just say it's enough. And we've talked with police about everything and we are taking security very, very seriously. But there's only so much you can really do. I mean, people don't get it. There's only so much you can do. We are we are going to be relocating to a, a, a new a new area with a new building with 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 insane security measures. And we are going to have substantial security. We we've been we've been discussion in discussion with major security companies for months now, well before any of this happened. All right. But this is it. The we, we I don't think we've gone a day without facing some kind of attack against us. We get basic secure uh, c- cybersecurity attacks. We get more serious ones. Uh, I don't want to give too much information on how they operate. And a lot of people have made points about uh, they've asked questions about how it was even possible that we we're hit by a DDO, DDoS attack because you need a lot of private information and I'm, uh, in order to pull, pull something like that off. And I'm like, bro, the attacks against us are substantive. They're substantial. All right. The swattings, in my opinion, are acts of desperation because previous attempts at coming after us haven't been effective. I think, you know, people need to understand it's not just all starting now. We've had incidents in the past of security breaches and violations, but we've not, you know, they, they, haven't, been, they, they haven't been meaningful enough for me to make a video about and say this stuff's happening. Now, with two separate swatting incidents, with a DDoS attack, with someone breaking out of the property... Yeah, it's 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 getting bad. You know, uh, Stephen Crowder talked about it. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't even know. You know, I, I, I've mentioned that 2022 is going to get crazy. And um, I guess 
you know, Timcast IRL is just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. I don't know what the ranking is. We're not the biggest podcast in the world. It's kind of crazy to me. Timcast IRL is like ranked like 150 on the on the top charts for podcasts or something. Maybe higher when you when you take in consideration all podcast platforms. It might be like 80. But like 80? What? Like I'm pretty sure the Young Turks have are are, are bigger on, on podcast platforms. I don't know, man. I guess uh I guess when it comes to YouTube, however, we are one of the biggest. I don't know. I don't know. You know, when when we host Marjorie Taylor Greene, we get hit. Um, when we host Andy No and James O'Keefe, not surprised. I'm not entirely sure it's James O'Keefe, to be honest, because we've had him on the show several times and we enjoy having him on the show. It may be Andy No, because you know the far left really, really despise him. Well, Andy, we'll have you back on the show anytime and we won't tolerate this and we're not going to back down. But I want people to understand as this is all happening. Uh, first, just to you know, stress and reiterate, talking about this has to be done. Um, when we had the person break into the property, we, we put it in the vlog and we mentioned it, strange man enters the property and, uh, people were like, why are you making content out of it? I look, my, my view of this was we, we just, we discussed it and we said, should we ignore this and cut it out and not let anyone know this happened? And I said, my, my fear is that there's, there's two, two ways to look at it. Some people said by making content about it, you're making it known and you're going to make it worse. And that may be true. I get it. But it's not the first time that someone has tried coming on the property. We just didn't talk about it last time. And so I said, the problem is, if we don't take this seriously and publicly declare you will be seriously injured by our dogs and possibly by our security, if you do this, it's not going to stop because other people have done it and we have had these problems. So I said, put it up, show it, and then I will... It proves to people that we're not making this up and, it, and, and, and we're taking it very, very seriously. I want to make sure when we talk about this stuff, everybody knows it's happening. During the show with Mike Rowe, the show went off the air. People were putting F in the chat. It happened. We talk about it. We, we, we made a video about it. We explained what happened. Why? These attacks are not new. They're going to keep happening. And I think regular people, people who are watching, need to understand, one, that the conflict is real, that there are that, that, that things are escalating and will probably get crazier. And I don't know where, where they'll end up, but it is going to be a crazy year. It won't just be happening to us. It'll be happening to a lot of people. If we dare host the likes of Steve Bannon or Marjorie Taylor Greene or Andy No, this is what happens. They will try to do, to, by any means necessary, to destroy you. I want people to know it. I want people to know. I also want people to know we take it very, very seriously. I want to make sure it is, be, it, it is beyond a shadow of a doubt. We have warned everyone publicly to an extreme degree. There are large dogs on the property. Large ones. I mean, some people might be familiar with the ones you've seen in the vlogs, and people may have not seen the other, other dogs, whatever. There's several. Uh, someone who comes here will probably be seriously injured. I don't want to be responsible for that. Someone who breaks on the, onto the property can be killed by security. I don't want that to happen. So some doofy idiot who trespasses on the property for some stupid opportunity at a time when we are dealing with attempted murder is, is one of the stupidest things a person can do, but he's not the first one. He's not the first person to try and do something like this, and now we're taking it more serious than we've ever taken it. It's, it, you know, some people have, have, have said we, sh we, we should build a perimeter fence yeah, around a, multi a multi-acreage property that's going to cost us a million bucks. We don't have that. So what we do have is security, dogs, and guns. Look, man, they were, they, the, 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 the political conflict in this country is, is, is getting crazier. And people say, you know, I see the chats and they're like, Tim's too pessimistic. I see the chats when people say things like, Tim has nothing to lose. They're like, Tim's just a rich guy. What does he have to complain about? Easy for him to say. Yeah, easy for me to say when strangers break into my house, when we get swatted within the span of two weeks, when we are undergoing cyber attacks, it is stressful. It is not something I want to deal with. And boy, is it really difficult to justify, to be completely honest, other than my passions, my desires, my drive, and my, and my uh, uh, stubbornness.
I'm not going to back down. The more people come at me, the more I just get angry and say, I'll do it again. You're mad that we had Marjorie Taylor Greene on? I'll call her up right now and say, come back on the show. Come back on. Bring Steve Bannon and Andy. No, we'll do it all at once. Screw these people. You're not stopping me with this. But then I see, I see, you know, I'm not, I'm not stupid enough to, to, to just fall for, uh, you know, one or two comments and believe this is the representative of everybody who watches the show and cares about what we do. But it's funny when I see people saying like, Tim talks big game, but he's got nothing to lose. It's like, dude, someone broke into my house and it's not, not the first person. We were swatted in the span of two weeks. We are getting, we get cyber attacks. People have, have, there's, there's, there's other things we haven't brought up that haven't been as serious, but yeah. I used to walk through New York and people would scream, F you, Tim Pool, and things like that. It's like, you think people want this? You think it's worth it? You think I want it? We, we moved to the middle of nowhere. Man, I, I talk about all the time how I'd love to just get in the van and go down by the river, right? And just ignore all of this and just chill and be with nature. I'd love to just read books and, and news and science. I'd love to just go skating with some friends and ignore all of the fray. But the reality is, as much as that sounds fun, this is what I'm driven to do. And this is what I care about more. I care about this stuff. I, I refuse to back down. I, I, I am obstinate. I am, I am angry. I will not be bullied. I don't care what they do. You will just make me dig in my heels twice as hard. So you know what I'll do? I, I will. Hit up Marjorie Taylor Greene and Steve Bannon and Andy No and James O'Keefe. And I'll say, can we get everybody just to come on all at once? And we, we can all give a big collective F you to, to, every, to the people who are watching who are trying to tell us no. I'm not saying I agree with Steve Bannon's opinions on everything. I appreciate the populism. Same for Marjorie Taylor Greene. But I argue with them about these ideas. And they have the nerve to try and get us killed over this stuff. You're not going to stop us. You're not going to stop me. You're going to make me push twice as hard. I'm going to tell everybody. I'm going to make sure everybody knows. Yeah, man, I don't know. It's frustrating. You know, there, there's people who think, I, you know, I'll see comments and people say like, there's no civil war. It's not happening. It's not true. I'll see people say, Tim isn't risking anything. He's just a rich guy in a mansion. And it's and it's just you know when we were when we started this show we were in a uh, like four bedroom house in the suburbs of Philadelphia it's not some big mansion and we got a loan to move to the middle of nowhere in a bigger house because we're expanding the business and I, I, it's a big house it is it's a very expensive big house yeah it's a mansion sure but we use it as an office it's not like. I personally just live in this gigantic mansion, you know, so uh, 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 I, I, my house is like a two bedroom and then we have the production facility for the company. But yeah, like I'll, I'll, I'll say it outright. Like, yeah, we make good money. Sure. Is it worth it for me? What you guys need to understand about me is that I grew up, you guys know, not in the, in the, in the wealthiest of conditions. I've never needed anything like this. But, but, you know, there are people who just, they, they don't get it. They think that everything that's going on is a game. They think it's silly. They're like, you know, oh, Tim's too pessimistic or, or stuff like that. There's, there's no chance of civil conflict. Okay, dude, you can believe what you want to believe. I'm not, I'm not here to tell you what to think. You can not like me. That's fair and that's fine. You can criticize me. Comment below. Tell me what you don't like about me. I'm just some dude talking to a camera. That's all I am. I run a business now, I guess. Maybe that's something. James O'Keefe called me a powerful individual. I'm like, that sounds crazy to me. But he's not wrong. I don't know. I just don't care for it. I don't care for power. I don't want to be anywhere near it. I just want to watch the chickens eat the food and run around and chase each other when they find bugs. I want to make a snowman. I want the world to be a better place. I want, I, I'm watching squirrels frolic back and forth in the fields and the deer. I appreciate that way more than sticking my neck out and getting involved in this major conflict. But it's a drive. It has to be done. We have to talk about it. We have to challenge it. Otherwise, there won't be a world where you can tend to your chickens and have a good day. Because we see what happens in these countries when bad people take over. I, I know about what happens in North Korea. I've, I've interviewed people who've been there, who travel there, who are even from there. They kill you if you steal food. They put you in gulags. If you have a cow on a farm in North Korea and it dies, you can't touch it. 
They have to come and distribute the beef equally among all people. Well, it's just insane and stupid. And all that is required for evil to triumph is that good men do nothing. And so every day I see the news, my entire life, I see this stuff, I get angry and I say, we got to do something about it. We got to stand up, we got to challenge these systems and we got to fight to retain our liberty. Somebody has to, to defend the, the, the human rights of the individual, the civil rights, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, all of that stuff. Because if we don't, the evil people take over and they will live atop their ivory towers and their castles and they will beat you down and you will suffer. And they want to do it to me and they want to do it to us. And they're hoping that by doing everything they're doing, they will break us and we will stop and it will not happen. I'm going to do it again. I'm going to have all the people on that have triggered this and we're going to reinforce our security and we're going to do it again. And we won't stop. I'll never stop. There's nothing you can do. You know, to the people who are saying we shouldn't talk about it, I get it. Don't bring up this happened. Don't show the guy. Don't talk about the cyber attacks. Just keep it under wraps. And I'm just like, I get it. But but I, I refuse, you know, I refuse to be told to shut to shut up and and not explain this stuff to people. There, there's there's a lot of stuff pertaining to you know drama and things like that that I don't care to talk about when it involves me and involves other people. And sometimes I do. It just depends. I don't know. How, I don't have. A, I don't. I don't know how I determine when it dep when it when it when it should or shouldn't be. Sometimes I'm like I'm not getting involved in this. And sometimes I'm like this should, we should address. And it's usually does it have something to do with the bigger picture here? All of this does. When I come out and I say, guys, I think this country is being ripped apart. People say, you're too pessimistic. And I'm like, I'm not making it up when Hawaii now requires a booster to enter the state. Or when California says they're going to double their taxes. Or when California is, is setting an open borders policy. When New York has a vax mandate, when Cook County does. When people are being denied. I mean, this stuff is happening. Do you think it's going to stop? I mean, people are going insane. And then it comes to my front door and I'm just like, yo. It is happening, and it's happening to me. Maybe it's not happening to you, and that's why you don't notice. But I got to say, I don't know. Maybe uh, I, I, you know, I can understand people who say they have kids, so they can't get involved in the fight. They're scared. They don't want to, you know, all that stuff. I get it. You know, I, I understand. Why would you want your kids in a house getting swatted? Well, all of us here, the employees my family. We're dealing with all of it. If you don't want to take the risks, I get it. But you think I should. Do you, do you, do you think I should? Do you think it's, it's, it's fair that everything we go through, we can't just go to bed. You know that, right? Like, you know, to the naysayers. I'm not saying this to everyone directly. I know a lot of people, uh, you know, for the most part, have been supportive. But I'm saying to those who are the naysayers, like, do you think that when, like, the day is done, I can just, like, hop in my bed with a smile on my face? Or do you think I have to have weapons prepped in a security protocol because someone might try and kill us? Because we could get swatted in the middle of the night. It's not so simple, you know? And it's going to get crazier this year. So I hope you all understand. And I hope it never, and I hope you never experience stuff like this. I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up at 1 p.m. on this channel. And I'll see you all then.